Hello everyone, I'm Nishu and I'm going to give this presentation on neutron detectors. First of all, what, what, the, what is, does it mean to detect a neutron or how do we detect a neutron? Since we know that a neutron is a chargeless quantity, we need to produce some sort of measurable or countable electronic signal to further process the information. For this, we need to use nuclear reactions to convert neutrons into charged particles. And then we can use one of the many types of charged particle detectors that we know from gamma radiation detection system like gas counters, scintillation detectors and semiconductor detectors. These are the nuclear reactions which are mostly used for, for which are mostly exploited in the current neutron detection system that we have today. In these uh, reactions, the product, products that are obtained like alpha rays, gamma rays and fission fragments can initiate the detection process by producing charges in the detection material. Here we, we have this experimentally obtained graph between the cross section of the nuclear reaction and the neutron energy. For nuclei like helium-3, B10 and lithium-6. In this graph, we have a region famously called as, called as 1 by V region, where the, uh, the cross section of the nuclear reaction is inversely proportional to the neutron energy. So in this region, if we decrease the neutron energy, we increase the cross section by tens and hundred folds. So by decreasing the velocity of neutron, we can also increase the probability of neutron detection. Based on this theory and strategies, many neutron detection systems has been developed one of the class of class is gas detectors in gas detectors we typically have a helium uh, a gas filled tube for example in this case let's uh, say this is a helium 3 gas filled tube so in this particular detection system we exploit this reaction where neutron incident neutron react with helium 3 nuclei to give two fission fragments and 0.76 mega electron volt of gamma radiation. This gamma radiation interacts with the gas present and ionizes it to produce around 25,000 ions and electrons pair per neutron. In this gas detection system, we have this anode, uh, anode which is connected to a high voltage power supply which, is, which can be varied and a cathode which is grounded thus we have an electric field in this direction so the electric field facilitates the deposition of the, uh, the elect we have a, we already have ions and electrons present in the system and this electric fields enables the de deposition of the charge and hence creating an electric signal which can be analyzed further generally gas detectors work in ionization mode and proportional mode in ionization mode, electrons drift to anode producing a charge pulse. In proportional mode, if the voltage is very high enough that the electrons collide and ionize gas atoms producing even more and more electrons. This is the graph between the pulse height or we can say the electrical signal to the applied voltage of the gas detector. This is a region which is called as combination recombination region. In this, the voltage is uh, so low that the most uh, that some of or most of the electron uh, electron ion pair that are, are produced they recombine and the pulse height is very low. If the voltage is inc increased, in we have a region called ionization chamber region, and further increasing the voltage high enough, we have a proportional region. The ionization chamber operation is mainly used for large neutron signals as in a nuclear, nuclear reactor. The proportional reason operation is used for single neutron detection which is mostly used for research work. Next class of detectors we have a scintillation detector. In scintillation detectors we have a scintillating material. In this particular example we are using the same exploiting the same reaction, 6 lithium nu nuclei is reacting with the nu uh, neutron to produce 4.79 mega electron volt of gamma radiation. The gamma radiation interacts with the scintillating crystal to produce photon which, produ uh, which, uh, uh, which produces photoelectric effect on the photocathode in the assembly, in the, in the assembly of the scintillation detector. 
the electrons are then fed to m photomultiplier and the end pulse is then analyzed and recorded recorded and analyzed these are some of the common scintillators which we use for neutron detection system in this table is given the scintillation efficiency photon wavelength and photons per neutron for the density uh, for different density of the six lithium atoms next class of detectors we have is semiconductor detectors in semiconductor detectors we have a pn junction diode which is in reverse bias and the depletion region mainly act as the neutron detection material same reaction we exploit here we use lithium based semiconductors which have six lithium nuclei to give the, uh, so in this reaction we again have a gamma radi uh, gamma radiation being produced and the gamma ra radiation produces the charges in the material which is sends the electric signal the typical nuclear cross section for this reaction is 940 lambda by 1.8 bonds and in this detection material or system we have typically 1.5 million holes and electrons that are produced per neutron this is equivalent to a charge of 2.4 into 10 to the power minus 13 coulomb this can be detected directly without further amplification but standard device semiconductors do not contain enough neutron absorbing nuclei to give regional neutral, reasonable neutron detection efficiency. So we can think of two possible ways to tackle this. First is to put neutron absorber on the surface of semiconductor or we develop a semiconductor device that contain enough neutron absorbing nuclei to give reasonable neutron detection efficiency. So what, what happens if we we do the coating with neutron absorber the layer first of all the layer must be very thin a few microns for charged particles to reach the detector but even then the detection efficiency is very low and most of the F uh, deposited energy doesn't reach the detector hence poor pulse height discrimination so before discussing what is a pulse height discrimination we need to know what is gamma ray sensitivity Gamma rays can transfer tra energy to the detection system through Compton scattering in the walls or field glass. Most materials emit 10 plus times as many gamma rays as neutrons. Therefore, gamma ray sensitivity is an important criterion for selecting a nuclear instrument. To tackle this, first pulse height discrimination is applied. The idea behind pulse height discrimination is that the pulse we get, for the, we get from the electronic system of the detectors we can analyze it and we know that the rate at which the pulse is created is proportional to the radiation interaction rate the that is the in the, the rate at which the radiation is interaction with, with interacting with the detection system which is proportional to the radiation emission rate and the height of each pulse is proportional to the amount of charge collected which is related to the energy of the incident radiation so these characteristics will allow us to know the radiation emission rate energy, and the energy of the incident radiation and will help us to identify and quantify the source. Technically, we can do this by setting discriminator, discriminator levels to reject the undesired events like fast neutrons, gammas and electronic noise. Pulse head discrimination can make a large, large improvement in background. Discrimination capabilities differ for different choice of detectors for example helium 3 gas detectors are, uh, are having very good discrimination capabilities so if we and uh, we apply these characteristics of pulse height implement these characteristics of pulse height and we we have, we develop uh, a technology for which we have in nuclear labs currently like SCA single channel analyzer if we feed these five pulses in, as an input to the SCA we get these outputs from the SCA the unwanted noises electronic signals and gammas has been removed typically uh, we have these common neutron detectors in the at the present the neutron detection efficiency and the gamma rate sensitivity is given for each detector type and its size and the 
neutron active material which is used in the neutron detection system. At the top most we have a plastic scintillator which is 5 cm thick and the neutron detection system uses 1H nuclei. The incident neutron is at 1 mega electron volt energy and the detection efficiency is 78% with the gamma ray sensitivity of 0.01. Same we have for liquid scintillator, except we have the gamma ray sensitivity of 0.1. So the gamma ray sensitivity is an important factor to choose the neutron detection system. And for dealing with gamma ray sensitivity, we use pulse height discrimination techniques. These are the references I have used to make this PPT. Thank you.